next speaker is Terry Alcock, who's the director of the Shirley Education and Action Society. And she's going to be looking, be giving us an overview of some of the issues that are facing uh, her fellow residents of Shirley. <laughs> Hi, can you hear me? Before I launch into my prepared uh, speech, I'd like to give a heartfelt thanks to all of you for coming here today, tonight. Um, we have been battling this for three years, and believe me, when you're sitting out in Shirley, BC, with half of your land mass being owned by a major forest company, you can feel pretty lonely at times, and you feel like maybe nobody else is, really cares about the issue, but to come here tonight and see everyone, and to know that people do care is really, really important to us, so thank you very much. Folks, time is running out. On March the 8th, 5,700 acres of former TFL 25 land including parcels around the soup potholes, Jordan River, and almost half of the land mass of the community of Shirley are going up for sale to the highest bidder. Valuable lands that have provided forestry jobs, recreational opportunities for the whole South Island, and precious drinking water for hundreds of residents, and this land will be sold for development. This is called highest and best use. For some strange reason, WFP thinks that highest and best use means how can we reap the most benefit for our shareholders. For them, best use and biggest profit are synonymous. Much has been said about the possibility of the CRD partnering with other levels of government and the TLC to purchase two small waterfront parcels in Shirley and Jordan River. And you've seen the pictures of them here tonight, as well as parcels around the soup plot holes. Well, while it would be a travesty for these parcels to be sold for development, and I applaud efforts to save them, focusing on them to the exclusion of the thousands of acres of forest land also on the chopping block would be a huge mistake. It sells short the genuine concerns of residents and ignores the serious and long-term effects of urban sprawl and global warming. Of course, I want to see these beaches saved, and I hope they will be. But focusing the discussion on a small portion of the 5,700 acres provides an easy out for the provincial government. They got us into this mess in the first place, and I don't want to make it easy for them. I want them to step up to the plate and find a solution to the problem they created. By releasing lands from the TFL without planning, without proper studies, watersheds, ecologies and wildlife patterns, without researching the potential for economic sustainability for communities through community forests, non-timber resources, agriculture and tourism, and without recognizing the importance of land claim settlements, the government has ignored its sworn duty to act in the best interest of all citizens rather than those in the corporate boardrooms. Now, along comes UBC with a plan, and I'm sure you've all heard about it. They want to buy the former TFL lands in their entirety. The figure I have heard is 28,000 hectares, and I may be up a little bit, but I think that's fairly close. They want to use them for education and research, for light touch logging and settlement of land claims. The only thing that's holding them back is the price tag and their borrowing limit and the gap between. They approached the government of British Columbia. 
for an increase in their borrowing limit, and they're turned down. Remember, this is the same government that amended Vancouver's charter to allow them to borrow more money so they could finish the athlete's village for the Olympics. Your elected representatives, and I thank John Harvey for this little story, because I wouldn't have remembered, but they will tell you that this cha uh, changing of that charter for Vancouver was accomplished by recalling the legislature on a Saturday morning, and the job was finished before lunch. It's not that difficult, but you need to want to do it. You need to see the importance of it. It's the same provincial government that's going to spend $560 million, and we don't know if that's the final figure, to put a roof on a stadium that most of us will never be inside. Wake up call. Where there's a will, there's a way. And our government has lost sight of what matters to British Columbians, and it's time that we reminded them. before the last provincial election, Minister Bell made a personal commitment to me. He said, don't worry, I'll protect your drinking water. Since then, I and others in Shirley have written dozens of letters to Mr. Bell, Mr. Bennett, and our beloved Premier, asking them to do just that. Guess what, folks? Nobody's answering. 120 families use Gowdy Creek for their drinking water, and there are two other creeks that are major creeks in our area, Jacob Creek and Craigbrook. And in, for Gowdy Creek, we have a community water system. The watershed for our system for Gowdy Creek has never been properly mapped, although we know that it goes through four of the parcels that are up for sale in Shirley. One of the few conditions that was placed on WFP for removal of the lands from the TFL, and this was explained to the organization that I'm representing here tonight by Minister Rich Coleman at the time, was that they were committed, Western Forest Products had to commit to continuing to utilize practices that will protect human drinking water. Now, we have been in touch with Western, and their response to our pleas to put covenants on these parcels to protect the watersheds before they're sold for development was to suggest that we purchase the parcels ourselves. <laughs> Price tag, $3,535,000. Not possible. Since then, they have entered into future dis uh, further discussions on the covenant issue, and those are ongoing right now. We must find a way to get the government to listen to the people and to listen to UBC because UBC had an elegant solution that would work. It would be one that all of us could support. Education, research, economic stability, settlement of land claims. I have to question why our government turned them down. I don't understand this and I'm sure I'm not alone in that. Mr. Premier, Ministers Bill Bennett, Ida Chong, and Pat Hill, go back to the drawing board. Make this proposal work for our communities, for the environment, for our children and grandchildren. Please don't drop the ball. You have an opportunity to win gold for BC and leave a legacy that will outlive out us all. Thank you all for coming here tonight. <laughs>